Episode 1. You've got some gall. A few years ago, I was running a GURPS campaign. If you don't know, GURPS stands for Generic Universal Role-Playing System. It's sort of like Dungeons & Dragons, but instead of a focus on fantasy, it's designed to adapt to any genre and setting. We were playing a modern setting in which a secret company had invented time travel. What the company discovered is that the world would end in five years, but they couldn't figure out why. If they sent probes or agents to the future to find out, either they were sent too soon and there was no evidence to the cause, or they were sent too late and never returned. The only way the company had found to help deal with this was to analyze the time stream from history and see where it could be tweaked to buy a little more time. A mission might postpone the destruction of the Earth by a few days or weeks, but analysts had no idea how these missions were connected that might give them a clue as to the cause of the Earth's coming demise. Our characters were one of the teams assigned to travel into history to make these adjustments. Our starting team had four people. Mei was a Chinese woman with a specialization in stealth. Her weapon of choice was a blowgun. She was also a kleptomaniac. In GURPS, characters are created by spending points for abilities, but extra points can be gained by taking disadvantages, and May's kleptomania was one which sometimes caused trouble. Zahira was the charismatic one. If a situation required social finesse, she was the one to do it. She had a gambling addiction, but I don't recall that ever causing any real problems for the group. Brad was a World War II veteran. A big beefy fellow, he was the only member on the initial team who was a character from history. He had fought at Dieppe and suffered PTSD. He was the muscle of the group and was well trained in firearms, though gun use was limited in certain periods of history. The company didn't want archaeologists finding a caveman skull riddled with bullet holes, for example. Jeremy was a blind man with a seeing eye dog named Buttercup. He was extremely intelligent, learning languages quickly, and training in medicine, herbalism, and history. Of course, being blind, he was useless in combat until he could get Buttercup trained as an attack dog. The first mission was to France in 52 BC. The assignment was to make sure the Gaul leader Verking Edric's cousin escaped the Battle of Alesia. The Gauls still had to lose the battle to the Romans, and notable historical figures in this case, Verking Edericks and Julius Caesar, could not be killed. The team appeared in the northwest of France, near a Gaul village. Their journey would take them across country, but they had six months before the battle. So they had time to spend with the locals, learning the language and culture, and getting news on Roman movements. Jeremy taught herbalism and period-appropriate medical techniques. Zahira gambled with the men, and Brad, though he struggled with the language, had a boxing match with the local strongman, and ended up making a close friend. News arrived from the north. Celts were attacking the coast, raiding food and goods, and taking prisoners to offer as human sacrifices for their gods. The Gauls of the region began to assemble an army to send to defend the towns under siege, and the party was invited to come along. As it happened, the army was setting out for a conflict in Dieppe. My plan was to have a bit of fun with Brad's PTSD. Feelings towards the group were wonderful until the first night on the road to Dieppe. May, having noticed the man leading the army had a magnificent medallion around his neck, decided she wanted it. During the night, she snuck through camp and stole it. In the morning, he noticed. Everyone was being searched, and suspicion quickly fell on the strangers in the midst. As May was guilty of the theft, and the Gauls were enraged, the party ended up stealing some horses and riding off toward Elysia, thus ruining my plans for a battle at Dieppe. It didn't take long for a group of four Gauls on horseback to catch up to the group. The team tried to hide, but Jeremy, unable to determine the direction from which the four Gauls approached, hid on the wrong side of a tree and was quickly spotted. The Gauls confronted the group, and a tussle between Brad, Zahira, and the Gauls ensued. May, still hidden, shot a poison dart into one of the gull's buttocks, and he dropped. After a quick parley, an uneasy truce was reached in which the party returned the horses and medallion, and was released in exchange for Jeremy saving the dying gull by sucking the poison out of his bum. The party then had to cross France on foot. 
On the way, they came across the Gaul city of Avericum, which was suffering from the Roman advance. Fields had been abandoned and burned, and the city was under heavy rationing. Still, it offered the party a place to stay for the night. But during this stay, May decided to sneak out and steal some food from the stores. However, despite her natural skills, she was caught, and the entire party was thrown in prison. Prison, in this case, was more of a cellar, which they shared with a few poor, starving souls and a bucket which was used as a chamber pot. Listen, said Jeremy, we gotta get our way out of here. You know, the femur is the strongest bone in the human body. We could kill one of these other prisoners and use his femur as a shovel. The other characters were a bit shocked at this suggestion. Look, Jeremy insisted, they're already dying, and we've got a mission to do. The rest of the team remained unconvinced. It turned out every day, the guards would force one of the prisoners to take out the bucket so it could be dumped and cleaned. Brad volunteered. He was escorted by two soldiers, and when they returned with Brad and opened the trap door to the prison, he started punching them out. The rest of the team clambered out to help him in the fight. May and one of the guards simultaneously spotted a loaded crossbow on a table and went for it at the same time. After a brief struggle, May was shot. Maybe she was already wounded, or maybe it was a lucky shot, but it nearly killed her. Serendipitously, the crossbow bolt did a decent job plugging the hole, and the blood that soaked into her thick garment created enough suction around the wound that she didn't bleed out and was able to flee. More guards were coming, alerted to their escape. They ran through the city, chased every which way. Eventually, Brad got his hands on a torch and threw it onto a thatched roof. The fire spread, and soon the guards had to turn their attention from their fleeing prisoners to the fire that was quickly spreading through the city. They managed to sneak out, and once they were safe, Jeremy had to tend May's wounds. He needed particular herbs, which was difficult, as he couldn't find them himself, being blind, so he had to describe them to Zahira and Brad for them to find. They trekked toward Alicia, the day of the battle approaching, I don't remember the circumstances, but Zahira approached a group of Roman scouts. I think she may have been planning to seduce them for information. They were impressed by her, but did demand who she was and what she was doing in a war zone. She told them she was part of a caravan, but had been separated, and by now they were probably all the way on the other side of Alicia. Wanting to help, the Roman soldiers insisted on escorting her around the Roman army to where she had told them she needed to go. They dropped her off, and it took her two days to walk back and rejoin the group. If I'm being honest, I don't really remember how the mission ended. They were successful, but the climax wasn't memorable. The true adventure was all in the journey. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to like and subscribe. In fact, let's be inclusionary. Feel free to like and subscribe even if you didn't enjoy the video. As I'm in the initial phases of learning to create these videos, I also invite you to comment and let me know what you did or didn't enjoy. Do bear in mind, however, that I am only one person, and what you have already seen is probably the limit of my artistic prowess. Also, take a look at my books Elf Mastery and Elf Doubt on Amazon. The characters and tales contained therein will also be subject to portrayal in my videos. If you enjoy the books, don't be shy to leave comments on Amazon. If you don't enjoy them, sorry, no refunds. Links are available in the description of the video. I am Surreal, giving you a wonderful night.